I had never imagined that sexting would destroy my career, would destroy my finances, would destroy my home, would destroy my freedom, and put me behind bars for five years. You had told me 15 years ago that my sexting would do all of this, I would have left. I would tell you that will not happen to me. I felt very alone and inferior. I had a lot of self-hatred as a teenager and I discovered through phone sex and masturbation, I felt that. And when I would go on the phone sex lines, I would have people talk with me and I felt wanted, desired, needed. But through my life, my sex addiction progressed, which is typical of any addiction, it's progressive and destructive. My sex addiction progressed and alcohol and crystal meth all became part of my repertoire of sex addiction. And by the time I was in my early to mid thirties is when my sexual behavior became out of control as well as my alcoholism. And I drank excessively to lower my inhibitions so I can go act out sexually whether it was uh, sex clubs, anonymous sex, sexting, cyber sex, or enhancing the feeling of pornography. Later on, I got addicted to crystal meth by my late 30s and early 40s, and the crystal meth enhanced the sexual pleasure, so my sex addiction was a hundredfold. I incorporated amyl nitrate, which we know as poppers, uh, I incorporated poppers. I was inhaling poppers constantly during sex, pornography, masturbation. And this became my lifestyle. Ultimately, I lost my career and wound up uh, bankrupt, homeless, and my drug and sex addiction just skyrocketed until ultimately my sexting behavior put me behind bars. I was sexting literally hours a day for years. And I literally got a high off it. I felt so exhilarated when I was sexting or cyber sex. Going into this fantasy world was exhilarating. And I had fantasy cyber sex and sexting with many, many men. And I would meet men on Craigslist, on Adam for Adam, on Manhunt, and all these other sites I would go on and meet these men. And a very small percent actually would hook up for sexual encounter physically, but a lot would get involved in this cyber sex sexting world. And that was a very big component of my sex addiction. The fact that I lived in multiple fantasy worlds during my cyber sex and sexting lifestyle I played many roles, and one of them was the daddy-son type of role play. And I did that with several men. Well, this one situation was a little more out of control, a little more extreme, a little more egregious, and my sexting behavior just was astronomical. 
So I met an 18 year old on Craigslist who said he was looking for older men for bareback sex. So I answered his ad, we exchanged phone numbers ultimately, and we started sexting. And during our sexting conversation, he had said he was 17, then he said he was 16, then he said he was 15, and we're doing this egregious older, younger role play. And at one point he says, I could be any age you want me to be. So my response at that point was, well, 14 to 16 is perfect, 15 is the perfect baby. I mean, 15 is not perfect. I don't date 15 year olds, but in this 15 uh, year old high school teen daddy sexual role play, uh, I went with it. Of course, I'm completely insane. I'm wrapped in the horrific grip of sex addiction and poppers and meth addiction. And I'm just out of control. So we had this egregious cyber sex for about a day and a half about 36 hours, and it was a lot in 36 hours. And if you were to read those text messages, you could tell that neither party is in their right mind here. (laughs) This was an insane conversation. But uh, I didn't think much of it, and ultimately never spoke with the person again. Eighteen months later, I go out to my mailbox and I get my mail and I'm walking toward my front door and four U.S. Marshals are pointing guns or tasers at me right there in my front patio. And I completely froze and they told me to get down on the floor. So I get down on the floor, they take off my belt, they take off my shoes, they put my hands behind my back and handcuff me while I'm sitting there on the floor. Meanwhile, I'm totally methamphetamine addicted at this point. I was even up for five days before they arrested me. And uh, I thought I was getting arrested for buying methamphetamine because I was buying it every several days when I was living in Wilton Manors, Florida. And ultimately they stood me up, they put chains around my waist, they put shackles around my feet and they walked me over to the caravan, the black caravan, sat me in the back seat. The other U.S. Marshals had left and they shut the door, they got in the front seat, there were two of them, and the driver, the lady, she made a phone call and said, we got him. And on the drive up from Wilt Manors to West Palm Beach, where I was interrogated for several hours, they told me why I was being arrested. Now, mind you, I was shocked. I couldn't believe that I'm being arrested for this. So ultimately, the short of the long was I did have cyber sex with a 15 year old. He was 15. I went to trial for that and ultimately was incarcerated for 56 months. And the charges were lewd and lascivious conduct because the nature of the cyber sex and computer pornography and child exploitation because I used a cell phone, which is a computer, to exploit a child because he was under 18 pornographically. So those are my two charges and my two convictions. And I did 56 months for the sexting. I had absolutely never met this person, never had sex with this person. During the process of legal proceedings, the story was that he and I had met on one occasion and had a sexual encounter, which was proven completely untrue, and I was found not guilty of that. But I put myself in such a terrible situation, and getting incarcerated and now lifetime sex offender registry because of that was daunting and extremely challenging to contend with. And uh, it definitely brought me to a point where I had to take a look at all my internal demons. I had to take a look at my addiction face to face. And I'm very, very grateful that I had a spiritual advisor that taught me an entirely new design of thinking, living, and behaving. I am also very, very grateful to say I am nearly 11 years free from sex addiction. I am nearly 11 years 
sober from alcohol and clean from crystal meth. I am drug free and sex addicted free today. And I am so grateful. But that sexting addiction, that cyber sex addiction, wow, it had such a grip on me that I look back and I, I just can't fathom how it had such a hard grip on my life. Today, I don't sext at all. I don't have cyber sex. I don't sext. I don't, I don't even have a nude picture in my phone. I mean, I just don't live this way anymore. And it is amazing to live spiritually with a clear mind, having a life of some level of self-mastery is just unimaginably wonderful. And I am so thrilled that I can encourage and inspire you if you struggle with sex addiction, sexting and cyber sex in part, that if I can do it, if I can clean my life up from the horrific mess it was, you can too. You can free yourself from the grips of sex addiction and live a life as a healthy, thriving Thank you.